Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So, in this video, we'll be learning about the ninth part of the identification of bodily fluids, and we were looking for blood. So, in this uh, video, we'll be discussing about the crossed over electrophoresis, uh, which will be the last method of biological identification of blood. So, let's study this. So, uh, crossed over electrophoresis. This method is a combination of immunodiffusion and electrophoresis. So we have already discussed immunodiffusion technique and electrophoresis is usually the movement of particles in a medium under the influence of an electric field and they get separated according to their mass to charge ratio. So this is electrophoresis. So with, we are, now we are combining these two techniques immunodiffusion and immunoelectrophoresis to identify the uh, origin of the blood. Uh, so this method is also known as counter immunoelectrophoresis CIE. So you should remember it's another name also. Let's discuss the methodology. Here, two arrays of opposing wells are created by punching holes in the agarose gel. So in the agarose gel medium, let's see here in the uh, picture given, uh, this will be the agarose gel medium. And what we have to do is, we have to punch wells two wells, one for the antibody and one for the antigen. Why we are punching the wells? So that we can drop our sample as well as antibody, antisera to it. The antibody and samples are loaded in opposing wells arranged by pairs. So they must be placed in the opposing wells so that if we get the results, it, uh, the results are very much clear and understandable, decipherable. Electrophoresis is used to drive the antigen and the antibody toward each other. Now you have to note here that this is the anode and in the anode side we are placing our antibody and in the cathode side we are placing our antigen. Now uh, we are passing the electric current through it. These two will drive towards each other and if they are of the same origin, same species, they will make a precipitate in the meeting point. This will be just a kind of arc precipitate. The wells containing the antibody should be proximal to the anode while the wells containing the sample should be proximal to the cathode. This is the same matter written which I explained now. During gel electrophoresis, the antigen which is usually negatively charged, it migrates towards the anode. Now I want you all to uh, search, in the, search and let me know why we are placing the antigen to the negative electrode or why the antigen is considered to be of negatively charged. The antibody migrates to the opposite direction as a result of electroendoosmosis. So through this phenomena of electroendoosmosis, the antibody it will migrate towards the opposite direction that is towards the direction of the antigen. The precipitate line is formed between the opposing wells if the antigen reacts with the specific antibody. So this kind of precipitate line will be observed if this antibody, this specific antibody, it will react with the antigen, giving a positive result. So let's understand these precipitate lines. The precipitate line is formed between a human blood sample and an anti-human antibody. So this is anti-human antibody placed at the anode side, while the antigen is placed in the negative side of the electrode. So this is of anti-human origin, so this will form an a, a precipitate line. Now, this is animal blood and this is anti-human antibody. So they will not form a precipitate line, they will not react to each other. So this is the negative result. Again, anti-animal antibody will react with the animal blood to form a precipitate line. And in this way, we can uh, find out the particular human blood uh, sample as well as animal blood sample. No precipitate line is formed when the anti-human antibody is tested for an animal blood sample. A precipitate line is formed between the animal blood sample and the animal anti-animal antibody. So this is the result of it. Now let's understand the procedure, complete procedure of uh, doing this test. So firstly, like every other test we discussed uh, in the previous slides about the immunodiffusion, we will prepare the sample and we will extract the sample. So extraction of stain in 100 micro, microliter of water for 30 minutes or alternatively a very small piece of stain is directly inserted into the well. It is more uh, convenient to extract the stain first because this will give more uh, clear as well as um, uh, reliable results. 
Now we will also take controls, the positive, which is known serum, negative extraction blank, and the substrate controls, extraction of substrate from unstained area. These three controls are also taken in the examination. Now the preparation of, uh, the preparation of agarose gel is also done. Heating 4% agarose and cooling at 55 degrees Celsius. And uh, we will cool it at 55 degrees Celsius. Then we'll pour it into a piece of glass slide and left to solidify. Alternatively, we'll pour uh, agarose onto the hydrophilic side of the polyester support film. Now, once the uh, our agarose medium is solidified, you will punch wells uh, according to your convenience. Like uh, you can uh, punch a central well by four surrounding wells or according to... Uh, uh, your need or according to your uh, sample size also you can decide how you in which uh, shape or how you have to create or punch wells in the media and do the uh, further examination now in those wells we'll be loading the antibodies as well as our samples so apply anti-human antibody in one row of wells apply samples to the other row of wells to the just opposite side positive negative and substrate controls are also applied to that wells now we'll do the electrophoretic procedure. The wells containing anti-human antibody, they will be closest to the anode, which is the positively charged electrode, while the, well, while the wells that are containing the samples, sample will be containing our antigen of interest, right? Because this antigen will only react to the antibody. So this should be closest to the cathode, which is the negatively charged electrode, right? During electrophoresis, the antibody in the antiserum should migrate towards the cathode while the antigen should migrate towards the anode. Due to their uh, oppositely charged nature, they will move towards each other. And the electrophoresis will be carried out at 10 volt per centimeter for 20 minutes. This is the standard procedure. Now you have to visualize this results more clearly. So you will do the staining process. You will soak the gel overnight in a saline solution and soak it in deionized water or distilled water for 10 minutes. Dry the gel between paper towels in a oven for 30 minutes and then stain the gel with a Kumasi blue dye. Then the stained precipitate bands will appear blue which will give positive result for the reaction of antibody and antigen. There are certain cases where you can encounter false negative results. Let's understand these cases, the false negative results can occur due to the post zone phenomena. Now, what is this post zone phenomena? Here, it is a phenomena where the excess of antigen in our sample, very much large amount of antigens are present, and that antigens they inhibit the precipita precipitation process. So, this is one of the reasons where in the previous slide I told you that direct you should not apply the stained material. You should first extract it through the blood uh, through uh, uh, distilled water or saline. So this is one of the reasons. Now false negative results can also occur when electrophoresis is carried out in opposite direction which results in sample running off the gel. So this may be one of the reasons when uh, electrophoresis since uh, we are uh, carrying out electrophoresis in the negative or the opposite direction, further electrophoresis is carried out using an incorrect buffer system. So the buffer system which we took for our analysis, that is incorrect or this will affect the antigen-antibody binding and uh, no proper binding will take place and we will get negative results through it. The amount of current applied during the electrophoresis is too strong and generates heat and denatures the protein. This is also one of the reasons for getting false negative result where in the process of electrophoresis uh, we are applying a very strong amount of current so that all the proteins will get denatured due to the heat that is generated in the medium and we will be getting the negative results. So what are proteins here? We know that antiglobulins, antiglobulins are antibodies. These are also proteins as well as the antigens are also proteins. So they will get denatured in uh, when the heat is generated. So this was all about this video. I hope you all have understood the procedure of electro immunoelectrophoresis, the counter immunoelectrophoresis. If you have any kind of doubt, you can ask in the comment section below. You can connect with us through our Facebook, Instagram and Telegram handles. Also, you can visit our website SavvyForensic.com. So in the next video, we'll be discussing about our next biological fluid that is semen. It's identification. I hope that you all like the video. You can share it with your friends and uh, spread the knowledge of forensics. Also, you can subscribe to this channel.
and press the bell icon for regular updates thank you very much for joining us